It's time for another edition of Racing Connoisseurs right here on TVG and plenty of race trackers come to the Brigantine overlooking the Del Mar racetrack known for their fish tacos. You never know who you might see in here. So let's go find out who's waiting. Well, our latest guest on Racing Connoisseurs needs absolutely no introduction, multiple Kentucky Derby winner, Doug O'Neill. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, Brittany. This is incredible. Well, I've been to Brigantine before multiple times, mm -hmm. but never on this patio. This is beautiful. It's gorgeous, right? And I think the perfect thing about Brigantine is we could just look right over our shoulders and see the beautiful Del Mar racetrack. It's got everything here. So, as I kind of led into, everybody knows you as a Kentucky Derby winning trainer and so successful as long as I've known you. But where did it all begin for you? You know, it all began uh, back in the streets of uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Oh, interesting. Pretty rough streets. Not Never rough. been there. Oh, yeah. You don't really want to go. A little sketchy? Just, ah, it's all right. It has its <laughs> moments. But um, I uh, grew up there and uh, at the age of 10, uh, my family moved to uh, Santa Monica, California. And wow, not, that's a good. Not rough streets there. No, well, it's a, it's a home of the homeless. There's a lot of. <laughs> it's true. But um, the first weekend we were here in Santa Monica, California, you know, you think you'd go to Disneyland or Magic Mountain or something like that. Mm -hmm. My dad took us all to San Anita, and right there, I was like, wow! I, I realized why my dad and my uncles loved horse racing so much, mm -hmm. and um, I just kind of got bit at that point, and I had a. Uh, a good friend and a basketball camp coach named Mike Amade, mm -hmm. who went to school with uh, trainer Jude Feld, mm -hmm. and uh, and Jude gave me a job right out of high school here at Del Mar, and pretty much I've been doing it ever since. So when you moved to Santa Monica, was that really your first interaction with horse racing? Pretty much, you know, in in Michigan at the time you had to be 14. Mm -hmm. So uh, my brother Dennis and my other brothers went a few times with my dad to Hazel Park and Detroit Racecourse, but. Uh, I was always kind of outside looking in, and, and uh, they were always reading the form and talking about horses, but never really got to enjoy it until I was 10 and at uh, San Anita. So when did you take over and really set out on your own? You know, it was probably, probably at like age 21 or so, about three years uh, into it, I um, jumped in, took, took one horse, and, and uh, uh, Ju or, uh, the late Doug Peterson let me uh, be his assistant and have a couple of my own horses with him, and, and uh, so that was probably the the first time where I really jumped in uh, with both feet and uh, started going for it. It's such a hard transition, wouldn't you say, going from being an assistant to really standing alone as a trainer. When did you feel like you really made that mark on your own, and you said, "Okay, you know what? I'm a successful trainer. I have kind of done this. I can do this." I don't know. I don't know if you ever get to that point. You know, you go through uh, slumps where, like right now, with slumping uh, at Del Mar, and you start thinking, God, am I training too hard? Am I not training hard enough? So, you know, these amazing horses, you just got to listen to them. And, uh, um, you know, when I started off in 86, it was a seven-day-a-week job. And, you know, you, you really, um, you're just thrown into the horses' lives, and, and you're, uh, you know, you're there caring for them, and you're able to just judge and feel how they're doing. and. Um, so, you know, I, I think probably I'm still evolving as a trainer, I would like to think. Mm -hmm. Still learning. And uh, probably the first horse that uh, we had that started running at a competition where I thought I would never get to was mm -hmm. a horse named Skyjack. You know, mm -hmm. he won the Hollywood Gold Cup, and it was like, wow. You know, I thought that was just left for the, the big-time connections, could only win races mm -hmm. like that. And I think that race really made me realize, you know, um, if you luck into a, a top horse and you take really good care of them, and uh, great things can happen. We've had a lot of top horses. Can you take us through just the mindset of getting to the Kentucky Derby with all have another, winning the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness? I mean, you have your team set by then, but what was that experience like for you guys? Oh, it was so amazing, and, uh, and that's, you know, when you mention team, to me, I, I love the fact that uh, we've been able to um, put together a team led by Leandra Mora and my brother Dennis, um, you know, Jack Sisterson, uh, Steve Rothblum is, uh, is a great uh, asset too. So we got so many guys, and, and it's really, um, you know, as you go on the journey of uh, trying to take all the horses to so there are certain races where they're going to go, there's a lot of question marks, there's a lot of 
you know, things that you um, need to huddle up on. And, and I really think I'm so blessed to have a great team. And that I'll have another journey was just incredible from winning to Bob Lewis as a long shot and, and, uh, and then winning the San Anita Derby. And uh, so it was just a, an incredible run. If you were to compare Team O'Neill with a sports team, who do you guys think you're most like? Wow, oh, wow, who would we be like? Well, uh, let's see, ideally a, a, a top winning team. Uh, like the Cavaliers or yeah. the Warriors, because those are two very different teams if we're talking basketball. But yeah. both very successful in their yeah. own right. Yeah, I like that. I like either one of those. <laughs> yeah, you I'll can't say the Pistons. It. I couldn't say the Detroit Pistons. It's been a while. Maybe yeah. back in the day, you know, the early 80s. The bad boy days mm -hmm. they were winning, but uh, like I guess we can't say the Lakers anymore, can we? They're coming back though. Yes, they're coming back. That's all I want to hear. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually I have uh, season tickets for about ten of us. So I want to go to a couple games here. To the Clippers, so. I mean, oh. Yeah, I know. Ah, uh, you don't really not feeling it. No, right. not feeling it. Right. Well, okay, so we'll put you yeah. in the in the likes of the the Warriors and the Cavaliers. I like that. How, how did you meet Leandro, by the way? Because he's been with you for so long, and you give him obviously so much credit. You know, Leandro, I had a. An assistant named Ricardo that was uh, um, with us for a while, and, and Pepe, had Ricardo and Pepe, two great guys, and they both uh, went on their way to other mm -hmm. other uh, challenges. And so I was uh, without an assistant. And George Gutierrez came up to me and noticed that um, I look lonely and I needed to. <laughs> so uh, you needed a team. <laughs> I needed a team. I was like out there on the field, and I was the only one out there. What's going on? And, and uh, so he had mentioned Tim Pinfield had just went to another country to train, mm -hmm. and his main assistant, Leandro Mora, was, um, you know, was going to stay here and looking for a job, so immediately I contacted Leandro, and and he uh, immediately accepted, and he just said, can I just have one week off? I just got done working for Tim, so uh, he took like a week no. off. I said, absolutely <laughs> not, but uh, now he is just, um, not only is he an amazing horseman, but he's he's family, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's like a brother, we're brothers, and and uh, he is just, um, any success that our team has had, he's a huge part of it. Do you attribute all of your success to this family atmosphere? I do, because I, I really think, I think horses, I know they do, they feed off us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really, life in, in, in itself is all about attitude, I think. Mm -hmm. And horses are no different, you know. If, uh, if you've got a good attitude and, and uh, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna perform well, they're going to do better, I think. And, and, uh, and I think the... The guys we surround the horse with on a daily basis, for the most part, we all have our down days, but for the most part, uh, you know, we have a good attitude and we, we realize how privileged we are to be, you know, working with these amazing horses and, and, um, and you know, right now as we're slumping, we're there together and we're staying strong and, and uh, we're going to make some tweaks and, and get, them, get them winning again. You say slumping, but you won the Kentucky Derby oh, this that was year, cool. so that that's was cool. pretty incredible yeah. with Nyquist. Obviously the defeat in the Preakness and in the Betfair.com Haskell, but you guys are regrouping. Can you tell us how Nyquist is doing? Nyquist is doing great. Yeah, he's going through this growth spurt, which you'll see a lot of three-year-olds do, mm -hmm. where he's probably grown a few inches. He's eating great. His energy level's great, but he's just gotten a little thin. It's and, like the uh, tall, skinny kid at yeah, school going exactly. through that growth spurt. Yeah, some All acne. Right. <laughs> got a little acne going on. Oh, no. no, he doesn't have acne. But um, so you know, t huddling up with uh, Paul and Zilla, we just decided, you know, a couple weeks of maybe getting him away from the stress of everyday training. We sent him over to. He's at San Luis Rey Downs now, which is beautiful. It's tranquil, and they have a swimming pool there. That's interesting. What did he get out of swimming? It's amazing when you see horses go around that pool. The amount of energy they put in to swim is—it's uh, incredible. I mean, he's really blown when he's done swimming, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's no pounding on his legs. It's kind of like you or I. Mm -hmm. You know, they use muscles that they normally don't use. So, I think it's a great way to, to help him out uh, as he's going through this little growth spurt, and and um, very happy. I think he's already put on 20, 25 pounds. I really have just in the last. Uh, you know, a couple weeks since the Haskell, as we've just kind of backed off him a little bit and are just pouring the grain to him, pouring mm -hmm. the alfalfa to him, and uh, and not training hard on him, he's starting to fill out a little bit. A lot of trainers mention sometimes it's really hard to keep weight on horses, especially with the traveling and these uh, tough races that they're in. Has he ever been one to have a little bit of trouble to keep on weight? He's never had. So, so that's why this is such a, uh, a unique thing for, for him. Mm -hmm. It's just as he's growing now, uh, um, you know, I think he's just, as we listen to him, he's telling me just back off a little bit on the on the weight on my back and the, and uh, the, the exercise on the track. So we're listening to him, and, and uh, we're going to continue to 
um, call audibles along the way, but uh, you know the ultimate goal is the Breeders' Cup Classic, and uh, so we got that date circled. We possibly might have a, a, another race into them before then. I will look forward to that. I mean, could you imagine what the Classic could look like this year with horses like Nyquist and Exaggerator and California Chrome and Dortmund? I mean, talk about a championship in November. That's a lot of celebrity. <laughs> Those are a lot of special horses this year. Yeah, no, it would be just an honor to, to be able to line up against those great horses, maybe even Beholder could, could show up there, Frosted. Yeah, it could be uh, the, the best classic to come around in a long time. So, um, And we're confident that when Nyquist, when he's doing really well, mm -hmm. he stacks up with all those horses. I know he's a little, not as long in the tooth as some of them, but uh, he, he's so gifted, so talented, and uh, I'm looking forward to that uh, that day. Hopefully it comes. Oh, and he's got that killer instinct, too. I know that's one thing the whole team says that Nyquist has. He does. Killer it, instinct. He does. He wants to beat you. Well, he started out as a supremely talented two-year-old, and it, it seems like your bench is loaded this year with talented two-year-olds. I'm going to make you put your handicapping hat on, okay, to help out all of our viewers here. Put it right on. Friday, you've got quite a few two-year-olds on hand. Uh, Simi's Temple, Tammy's Window. Can you tell us about the expectations for them on Friday? Yeah, they're both those fillies were, were uh, trying to grab. Actually, Simi's Temple just ran on the grass, uh, uh, so she's coming back. And she's a filly by Rolla Plaz we bought from Europe, and uh, we're excited about her. She, the other day, she just ran real steady, so we're making some changes equipment-wise, and we're going to kind of put her more into the race. Tammy's Window, there's a lot of grass pedigree. Uh, in her family line, so we're trying that out with her. But it's, it's such an exciting time of year because mm -hmm. you just hope and pray, and you can feel it that there's a Nyquist in there somewhere. And uh, whether these two fillies are one of them, not sure, uh -huh. but we're excited about Friday with them. Well, could Green with Eddie be your next Nyquist? He's such a, I mean, you got the same connections. You got Paul <laughs> and Zilla Redham, and uh, he's a homebred, and the Square Eddies have just been so phenomenal the way they've. Uh, They've one going long, going short, turf, mm -hmm. dirt, everything. So he could be, you know, you never know. He's uh, He's got that killer instinct. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a couple in the best pal with uh, Rinse and Repeat, another homebred of Paul and Zilla's. And then uh, Secret House of Saul Coonins, uh, mm -hmm. who's a son of Tiz now, who is extremely talented as well. So we're still, uh, we're, we're excited about some babies we have that haven't even started yet. So the future's bright. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that Best Pal Stakes. Coming up on Saturday, a race that Nyquist won in 2015, leading up for the Grade 1 Del Mar Futurity, which I'm sure you'll have, you know, a loaded amount of horses in that race. And you mentioned these two horses. Secret House obviously has more experience underneath his belt. He ran in the Santa Anita Juvenile. Was he always a horse that you had high expectations for? We really have, yeah. He's, uh, he's an absolutely beautiful, handsome horse. And good size, got a big white face on him. And a lot of a lot of weight on his legs. So he's just he's such a handsome dude, and extremely talented. Jumps a long way with not a lot of effort. And I really thought we would we wouldn't see the best of him until we went two turns. And when he debuted the way he did, uh, I called Saul right away and just said, you know, we stay lucky and keep him injury free. There's no telling how good this guy could be. So they kind of ran away from him a little bit in the San Anita Juvenile. We're adding blinkers to him today, uh, just to kind of keep him more into the race without having to send him and. We got Santiago Gonzalez is going to ride him uh, here in, in the Best Pal, so we're still extremely excited about uh, about Secret House. And then rinse and repeat. Where do you see him fitting within the field? as he just broke his maiden? Yeah, you know he's got a win over this track. He's got three races under his belt. Uh, he likes to kind of lay back and let the race unfold. So, you know, if there's a hot contested pace, I, I see him uh, running down the lane. So, um, he's a Calbred who. Uh, you know, we decided not to run him and Green with Eddie together mm -hmm. in the last Calbred stake, so we decided to split them up, and uh, I think the distance will suit them well. One race that you haven't won yet that would really make a highlight of your career? Oh, wow. Well, the Breeders' Cup Classic. Yeah, that would be uh, uh, that would be pretty cool. I mean, that's that's really the the Super Bowl of, of the older male division, so that would be, uh, that's on the bucket list. We'll see if Nyquist can get that job done. Doug, thank you so much for joining for me on me. another edition of Racing Connoisseurs. Oh, and we didn't even introduce yes. the drinks here. This is called the 15th Street, which is a wonderful street just down here in Del Mar. And this is called the Betting Lady. I love Appropriate, the names. right? I love the name. Cheers. cheers to you yes. and cheers to another edition of Racing Connoisseurs here at Del Mar Hotspot, the Brigantine.